So we're going to talk today about um, winter identification of pawpaws, thanks to Jack Sharp for being my cameraman today. And uh, here are some of my pawpaw trees that are getting larger here. And uh, one thing to notice, I think first off, is just how they're shaped. They have a general pyramidal shape with a central leader, typically, but they can differ a lot because, you know, sometimes they're leaning or the central leader becomes damaged and they take on sort of different shape. Another thing to note is how that they have alternating branching. So it's never bilaterally two branches on either side of another branch, but rather a branch uh, going one way and then further up the, the leader, a branch on the other side. So they're never directly opposite one another. And this goes for the larger branches as well as the smaller branches and down to the buds, which we'll talk about next. Let's find a better lid. But as you can see, on the smaller branches, there's still that alternating branching behavior. And if we look closely at the buds, we can see that these will be flowers, which will start to swell and emerge first. They're small, round and have a brown fuzzy pubescence and sometimes they'll have those little caps and I'm not sure what this is called but that will usually fall off in the fall but not always or as as the buds begin to swell so uh, soon we're gonna collect cyan now leaves will emerge at these smaller kind of pointed buds and this is the what the leader looks like. There's a, a covering there and a tinier bud near the base. So uh, eventually this will produce leaves in the spring. And you can see here as well, there is a line, maybe a little bit easier to see here. There is a line here that indicates where last year's growth began. And we need to select for scion material from only last year's growth. Seedling grafting uh, is covered on the top here, and you end up uh, taking pieces of last year's growth that ideally are about the diameter of a pencil or so, but you may find that that's kind of difficult to find with pawpaw. We'll get to that in a minute, but any of last year's growth that is uh, is viable for grafting, especially if you have a matching diameter rootstock. This would be ideal to have a perfect match for diameter, but a whip and tongue graft can kind of accommodate slight differences in diameter because a slot holds the two pieces together. And a bark flap graft here would allow a large difference in diameter between the scion and the rootstock because this whole area of cambium layer is exposed and will join one side uh, and sort of just naturally match up. What you're trying to do is get that green cambium layer to match up between your scion piece and rootstock. And this will happen when later in the season the rootstock is beginning to leaf out. In fact, I should have drawn that. These are dormant, as we can see the buds. Once the rootstock begins to leaf out, we'll have pieces of scion saved in the fridge to use in the spring. You can also use slightly different grafting techniques for larger diameter top grafting. In this case, you would cut the stump at an angle and tuck the scion into a piece, a flap of bark that's been pulled out and cut to the exact width of the scion. For a cleft graft, you would have this scion cut like a chisel tip and inserted to at least meet one side of this split down the middle of your rootstock. I don't like this graft as much because these ones tend to heal all the way around 
but this one leaves a lot of exposed wood, as does this one. But this is a way to change over a mature but uh, lacking in fruit quality tree, and I've done that with some of my uh, trees. And it's a good way to use your larger diameter scion that might be too big for some of your seedlings. Let's look at some scion. This is a nice piece right here. It's got that near pencil diameter and it's a lead from uh, this branch. You could use a side branch, but you'll notice that the diameter tends to be smaller on these. Um, but again, you just want, you can cut more than you will use, but in the end you'll want to use scion from above the line of last year's growth and you'll only want really a few buds and you'll want to get rid of flower buds so that it pushes energy into leaves only. Uh, PC4 here is a pretty decent candidate for grafting I think but really it also just needs a prune so um, we can take some nice pieces of scion wood but then eventually, I think I, uh, while it's dormant, I'll want to do some trimming. I think I tried to graft this at one time, but uh, a central leader took over on this side, and there's a competing leader here, and you can see that there's a narrow crotch there where the bark is beginning to be included. And um, you don't want that, especially if this starts to get really heavy, because it'll be prone to rot there and may crack, and then since pawpaw bark is so stringy it may peel down the side so we want to avoid that I think eventually I will trim this off entirely but I think for now I'm going to severely trim it back um, uh, or I'll grab for now some uh, scion pieces um, but uh, eventually I will continue to prune this over the years encouraging it to go to this side as, uh, rather than put energy into this and then eventually get rid of it uh, as I gradually, so as not to make it as drastic a cut. Take it in steps. So, uh, you get the, the top leader there and uh, some other pieces, but we're after just nice diameter um, pieces. Now, I could even trim further back. Basically, you want to leave a branch Ideally not one growing inward. Uh, you'd want to remove any of those. And uh, you want to leave a little bit above the, the branch joint. You don't want to trim directly above it or even, you know, injuring the branch collar, which you can see is a, the area around where the branch comes out. So we'd probably want to trim somewhere around here, I suppose. I also owe myself a nicer pair of shears that'll cut more cleanly, but I did at the very least clean these with rubbing alcohol uh, um, ahead of time and will do so between trees so as not to spread any fungal stuff, although pawpaws really aren't prone to it. So um, eventually when we want scion, or we, we could, you know, maybe we can't really use too much of this small stuff, I could try to, but we can just keep uh, we'll trim back that and that. Now we have our piece of scion that we can come back to. Uh, there's last year's growth, and then we'll just trim it down to size when we actually follow through with our grafting. Lastly, we'll add any scion that we're collecting to a Ziploc or a zipper top bag um, and label which tree we're selecting from, and we'll get some more here in a minute. And then um, you can spritz a little bit of water in there with it. I suppose you could keep damp paper towel, but I don't think it's really necessary. And then just keep it in your fridge until you're ready to use it, which will be around late April, May, maybe even into June. I did some as late as July last year, but that's usually a bit too warm. But temperatures were such that a lot of them seem to take. We'll see if they make it through the winter. But ideally, when temperatures begin to uh, be in the mid-80s or so, uh, after the rootstock is actively growing, 
and uh, when there's not a lot of rain or wind in the forecast is a great time to do your grafting. Into the basement fridge goes my labeled Scion selections from PC4 bagged with just a little bit of moisture. I'll retrieve them from the refrigerator later in the spring. I've also got my stratified seeds in here and we'll be looking at that in another video. One final note about Pawpaw Winter ID is that it has rather smooth gray bark. You'll note some lichens sometimes, areas where branches uh, were and are healing, and sometimes a slight greenish tint, but overall it's a smooth, slightly pebbly, grayish bark. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.